Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. In today's Go tutorial, we will be discussing about pointers. So what is a pointer? A pointer is a variable which holds the address of a memory location. Let us now try to see the working of pointers in Go. I have some boilerplate code uh, on my screen. So we are declaring a variable a of type integer whose value is 42 and then printing its value and type. Then we declare a variable b whose value is equal to the value of a and then we print the value of b. Then we modify the value of b to 21 from 42 and then we print a and b again. And as for the output of the program, we can see that a is 42 type integer, b is 42 and type is integer. Then again, a and b are printed where a is 42 and b has been changed to 21. So we all know that b is declared as a new variable in memory and the value of a is copied into the variable b. And then when we modify the value of b, it has no bearing or no effect on the value of a. Now let us modify the program such that b holds a pointer to the memory location of where a is located in the computer's memory. And then we will also see how we can make changes to the variable b to affect the value of the variable a. So for doing that, I have to declare b to be a pointer type and not a numeric type. Uh, for that, I will say var b and instead of int, I will say star int. So star before the name of a data type in Go represents that it is a pointer data type. And then I will say that var b star int is equal to ampersand a. The ampersand represents the address of operation. So what are we doing on line number 18? We are telling the compiler that we wish to declare a variable b which is a pointer to an integer variable and in the variable b we wish to store the address of the variable a. I'll actually be commenting out these lines of code and I will just run these lines for the moment. Uh, so we can see that uh, the value and type of a are 42 and integer and next when we try to print the value and type of b we see that its value is 0xe. So the, this is basically the hexadecimal representation of the memory address of where a is located in the computer's memory or the computer's RAM. And then we see that the type of b is star int representing that b is a pointer to a variable of type integer. Next, let us try to see how do we dereference a pointer in Go. Uh, so what do we mean by dereferencing a pointer? Uh, by dereferencing a pointer, we mean that we try to access the value which is stored at the location pointed to by the pointer. Uh, so suppose in this case, our pointer stores this address and this address stores the value of 42. Uh, so when we dereference the pointer B, we will actually get the value of the variable a in this case. So let us see how that works. Um, I will comment out uh, or let me just copy this print statement and then let me simply say instead of the variable b star b. So um, when I go ahead and run this program, I see that the output for star b is a value of 42 and a type of integer. So by using the star operator in front of a variable which is of type pointer, we have been successful in trying to dereference the pointer. Uh, now notice the difference between the usage of the star before the name of a pointer variable as well as while declaring a variable type. Now let us see what happens when we try to update the value of a and then print the value of a as well as the dereference value of B. When I go ahead and run this program, we see that the value of A becomes 21. And when we try to dereference the pointer B now, it also shows us that the value is 21. Uh, okay, uh, there is one more way in which 
we can update the value of the variable a and that is by use of dereferencing so if i say star b is equal to let's say 10 in this case and if i try to run this program we again see that the value of a has now been changed to 10 because we changed its value by dereferencing the pointer pointing to the variable a so let us now try to see what is the zero value of a pointer variable uh, so suppose if i declare a pointer variable let's call it var p and it is a pointer to type integer and i don't supply it a value while initialization uh, then i try to print the value of uh, p and let us see what will be the value of p uh, i run this program and i see that the value of p is nil and its type is a pointer to integer so we see that uninitialized pointer variables will have a value of nil in go therefore whenever we are working with pointers in our programs we should make sure that we use if statements to check pointers for being nil before we actually try to go ahead and dereference their values let us in fact see what happens when we try to dereference this null pointer when i go ahead and run this uh, and yes we get a segmentation fault it says that invalid memory address or null pointer dereference so uh, better be careful of this you could simply add a null check um, uh, sorry a nil check uh, if p is not equal to nil then do this uh, so i'll quickly add a else clause as well uh, let us say else simply fmt dot print ln and let us say null pointer d reference okay let's try to run this and yes now it works correctly and since uh, this condition is false um, this statement gets executed and we see the output that null pointer has been dereferenced so till now we were working with pointers to integers but actually we could have pointers to any of those valid data types so if i have a float 64 here and uh, let me just give it a floating value as well okay so what happens when we try to run this code obviously it will fail because we are supplying an address of a float 64 and trying to store it in a pointer of integer type or a pointer that can only store addresses to integer variables uh, okay so uh, to simply correct this i have to say float 64 here as well and when i try to run this program uh, we can see that the program runs correctly uh, we could have variables of the struct type um, so let me just initialize it with a certain value and uh, like i said not only floats but we can have pointers to any data types even user defined data types so we can also have pointers to any sorts of structs so uh, let me quickly change the float 64 to um, uh, the struct type so if i go here and change this to my struct and i say uh, my struct and then i put this value into curly braces and then i also change the pointer b to point to a value of type my struct um, and the 0.42 can be changed to uh, say a 1 because this struct holds uh, an integer value if i go ahead and try to run this program here we see that the output shows that b the variable b is holding an address to a struct containing a single value of an integer 1 as of now to actually go ahead and print its address we have to change the percentage v to a percentage p in the print specifier and we can see the address of our struct in memory uh, okay so but in all of the cases till now uh, we first created a variable and then we created a pointer to that variable now this need not always be the case uh, so to demonstrate this concept let me simply declare a variable which is called ms and which is a pointer to a my struct in the next line i can say ms is equal to the address of a my struct so i say my struct and then i can initialize the my struct with a certain value in the next line i could go ahead and try to print the value of ms 
by dereferencing it. So I say star ms and star ms here. If I go ahead and try to run this program, uh, okay, I can see that ms is pointing to a struct in memory which holds a value of 10 in the num field uh, as well as the type of the value to which ms is pointing is main dot my struct and if we go ahead and try to print the value of ms itself let us see what happens ms and ms here as well if i go ahead and try to run this program okay we see that ms is a pointer to a main dot my struct and holds an address in the memory the final point under discussion today is one of goes allocation primitives which is called the new function the new function in Go allocates memory for a variable of a particular type in the memory and it returns the address to that memory location. Let us see it's working in action. Uh, so here I will declare a variable b which will store a pointer to an integer and I will say that b is equal to new int. So what new int is doing is that it is creating or allocating memory for a variable of type integer in the computer's memory and then it is returning the address of the newly allocated variable. And here we are storing the, that address into the variable b. Uh, so when I go ahead and try to run this program, we see that b stores a certain address and is a pointer to an integer. and uh, the value stored at the address pointed to by b uh, is 0 or when we dereference b we see a value of 0. Uh, so how do we actually go about assigning a value in this case? Uh, well we have already seen that syntax we can simply say star of b is equal to uh, something like 10 in this case and yes now we see that the value of 10 is stored in the memory location pointed to by the variable b and that is the usage of the new function. And just before we go, please make note of the fact that Go does not allow you to do pointer arithmetic. Pointers are good, but pointer arithmetic is absolutely bad and it just spoils the readability and maintainability of your code, which is against the core principles of Go. So Go does not provide you with pointer arithmetic. Uh, however, if you have decided that you just want to use pointer ar arithmetic in any case, Go provides an unsafe package, which um, as the name suggests is very unsafe and in most cases, um, you will find no use of this package in Go. Uh, so if you do still want to check it out, here is the documentation. I will link it in the description below. So please do check it out. Apart from that, all of the code that we just saw today has been updated in this GitHub repository aedorado slash learningo and the file name is pointers.go. So please do check it out as well. With this, we come to the end of our discussion about pointers. So if the video helped you and you like the content of the video, please do hit the like button. If you like the content of my channel, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. And I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial. Like always. Thanks a lot for watching.